Okay, now to wrap up this series, we are going to talk about PHP classes and object-oriented programming. And we're not going to cover the full gamut of PHP classes and object-oriented programming. We're just going to touch the surface because I want to familiarize you with classes and object-oriented programming, but I don't want to dive too deep into it. We will dive more deep into this in the PHP Mastery series. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into it and learn a little bit about PHP classes and object-oriented programming. So I'm going to jump over to my application and I'm going to create a new folder. And inside of this folder is where I'm going to store my PHP classes. And I'm just going to create a new file in here and save this as greeting.php. And this is going to be our first class. So to create a class, what we're going to do is simple enough. We just use the keyword class, and then we're going to give the class a name. So I'm going to give this a class name of greeting. And then I'll add the open curling brace and the ending curly brace. And inside of here is where I'm going to store a bunch of functions for my greeting class. And inside of a class, whenever you create a function, they're also referred to as a method. So let's create our first method, and we're going to call this greet. And then we're going to just return a string and just say welcome to PHP classes. And by adding multiple methods inside of our grading class, we're going to be able to be a lot more organized with how we get functions and how we store functions. And you can see that as your application grows, you're probably going to have a ton of functions. So it's good to have them organized in separate classes. So let's go ahead and see how we can run this function. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we need to include our greeting file. So we need to include essentially all of our classes. So I know that the header is included in every single file of our website. And inside of here, we're also including the functions.php. So I'm going to include all of the classes that I want to use right up here. And that'll probably be a better way to organize all the different classes that you want to include in your application. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say include, and I want to include application slash greeting.php. Okay, so now inside of our home page, I am going to create a new greeting object and then display the greeting message inside of the function that we created. So I'm going to create a new variable and call this greeting. And we're going to say that we want to create a new greeting class. And then what I can do is since I have this variable, I can access any of the methods inside of our greeting class. So we had the method of greet. So what I can do is I can say that I want to echo out greeting greet. And you can see that we use the arrow right here to reference any methods or any functions inside of our class. So let's save this. Let's go back to our home page and reload. And you can now see that we get the message, welcome to PHP classes. So we have included our greeting class, and then we created a new greeting, and we echoed out the message right here. So let's go back into our class. And you can see that we have this function right here. And there are three different types of functions or methods that we can create, which are referred to as either a public function or public method, which means anybody who creates a new greeting class has access to. We can also create a private function. And this means that this function is only going to be allowed to be used inside of the greeting class itself. And then we have another one called protected. And this one is a little bit more like a, you can think of it like a private function, but we'll go into protected functions a little bit later once we get more into inheritance and object-oriented programming. So for now, we want this to be a public function. And then what we can do is we can also create variables inside of our class. So I'm going to create a public name. And I'm going to give that a name of Tony. And then right here, I'm going to say, welcome to PHP classes. And then I'm going to print out the name. So I'm going to use the this object. And this is referencing the current class that we're in. So if I say this name, we're actually referencing this name right here. So let's save that. Let's go back here and reload and we get welcome to PHP classes, Tony. So let's say that maybe we wanted to create another function to change the name. What we could do is we could say public 
function change name and I want them to pass in the name that they want it to be changed to and then we can say this name equals name. So let's go ahead and change the name and then show the greeting message. So right here I'm going to call greeting change name and I want to change the name to John. So I went ahead and changed that. We go back here and instead of Tony we're going to get welcome to PHP classes John because you can see that we changed the name right here. So what we could also do is we could create another greeting now if we wanted to greet someone else. So we could say greeting two equals new greeting. And I could say greeting two change name. And maybe we want to change this to Mike. So now I can have another paragraph here and I can echo out greeting two greet. And if we go back here and reload, you can see now that we get welcome to PHP classes, John, welcome to PHP classes, Mike. So you can see that we have set a new name and we can have all these different functions. And we essentially created an, a greeting object right here. So once we said new greeting, we created a new object of the greeting class. So we changed the name to John and then we greet it out here. So you can see that we could even go down here at the bottom. And as long as we're calling the first greeting, it is going to give us the name of John. So you can see that that is John right there. If we were to actually change the name for greeting instead of greeting two right there, then sure enough, we would get Mike. And you can see that this one gives us Tony because we have not changed the name for greeting two. So that is the very basics of PHP classes. And like I said, I just wanted to briefly touch the surface of classes and object oriented programming because I didn't want to overwhelm you with too much information. And this will be a nice segue into the PHP mastery course where we'll be learning a lot about object oriented programming, inheritance, and interacting with the database. So be sure to test out PHP classes, play around with them, and just kind of have some fun. And before closing out this series, I wanted to share with you just a few places that you can go to if you need to reference some PHP code and how you can do something. So I actually grew up learning PHP from W3 schools. You can go over here to learn PHP and they have tutorials teaching you all about how to install syntax, comments, variables. And then if you go down here to functions, and they also have more advanced things like handling files and object oriented programming. So if you get stuck, come here to W3 schools and it will be a great resource as you continue to grow your PHP programming skills. But that is it for now. Thanks for watching the PHP basic series. I hope this sets you up on a road to creating web applications and learning more about PHP and just programming in general. If you do want to get more in depth with PHP, then go ahead and click up here and I'll take you to the PHP mastery course. Additionally, if you want to learn how to create your own profitable software as a service, be sure to check out my latest course called SAS adventure right up here. And that is it. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and be sure to follow me on Twitter at TNYLEA. I hope I see you soon in a future video.